Hey folks, it's Quilly Dean here, and welcome to Let's Play Some Crashlands. Crashlands is one of these survival crafting action RPGs um, that there have been many of them, and there will continue to be many of them because they're a great genre. But the thing that appeals to me when it comes to Crashlands is the fact that it's a lot faster paced, both in the sort of exploration and combat side of things, as well as the crafting. Uh, one of the things that they've tried to do here in Crashlands is try to eliminate some of the tedium associated with some of these types of games. Now, it's not the to say that some you know things like inventory management isn't an interesting uh, part of some of these games but they've tried to go in a different direction here where basically you have unlimited inventory you don't have to worry about that too much and the crafting system is just a blast to interact with it's just fantastic to play with now I've started this video just after the very first sort of intro tutorial level where um, you're on the ship and bad things happen. Basically, we work for the Bureau of Shipping and we were on the Bureau of Shipping shipping ship Assess. That's right. Our ship name was the BSSS Assess. And if you like that kind of wordplay, you're really going to enjoy some of the humor in this game. I do find it to be really funny as well as really fun to play. Now, I already have a lot of series on the go, and in three days, I'm actually going to be leaving on a trip for two weeks. So I don't know how much I can promise for content for this. My plan is I'm going to try to binge play as much as possible today and then get out up on, the, on YouTube one day at a time while I'm away. At some point, the series might just sort of stop because I will have run out of videos and I will still be away in Europe. We may pick it up again when I get back, depending on how interested people are in this. But just to let you know, we're going to record a handful of episodes. Um, I don't know how many. Probably Probably somewhere between four to eight or something like that and then we'll uh, have to pick it up again in the future anyway here we go we've got our survival station that's going to be deployed just south of our crashed escape pod and juice box who's our little companion over here is telling me that i should make some floors out of sawgrass so we're being introduced to the very first start of the crafting so what's interesting about this is in addition to a pc version of the game that is going to be available on steam there's also going to be a mobile version of the game and they have a um a cloud save system that can sync your saves between the two. Now, at first when I heard about that, I was actually quite concerned that this game might be too, you know, mobile-ified, you know, too 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 much design for just a touch screen, that sort of thing. But I've been very, very, very impressed with the PC controls. In particular, um, there are keybinds for Q, W, E, R, A, S, D, and F. Um, by default, are bound to a bunch of different actions, and you can rebind these all. I don't know if I can show you... Um, I guess I can go to the main menu from here. That should be okay. And if we check the settings, you can see we can rebind all of our keybinds as well, which is a really, really nice thing to see. So it feels to me like this is a proper PC game that also, just based on, on the style of gameplay it is, can work on a tablet. And I love the idea that it syncs your saves. I think that's going to be a pretty good feature. In fact, if I had a more competent tablet, I would probably be excited about being able to play this um, on my trip that I'm about to take. So anyway... Uh, so you click to move around, you've got this great looking little character, I love the look of him. To me it looks like a sort of a weird pinky Iron Man. Your name is Flux, you are a delivery robot, and then we have our companion Juicebox, who is currently uh, carrying our three packages that eventually we will have to deliver. But for now, survival is the goal. So we can go ahead and click on some stuff, we found some bacon weed over here. Bacon weed is edible, just like these, um, if I load this up, what were these? These Space duck space pies that I rescued from our ship during the escape sequence, uh, and they can be consumed to heal us. So apparently, even though we're a robot, eating food can heal us. We can punch grass to get bits of leaves and things like that. I cannot deal with this right now because I need a saw to cut this. So let's punch some more grass. We've been instructed right now our, our job is going to be to create some flooring. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of that. Now, there's some great um, crafting tracking functions in this game uh, and by default here with the quest because we're building flooring it went ahead and set that up for me in the top right corner so I can actually see that I need a total of 10 blades of this grass to build the grass floor so you know exactly how much you need you don't have to keep checking your build screen one of the the many little lovely things we just found some kibweeb and you do have a compendium that continuously updates we're going to take a look at that relatively soon I'm going to punch that. I'm going to get some of this uh, fertile earth or just this dirt right now. I know I'm going to need a lot of that later on. Pick up a stick, punch a little bit more grass, and keep going over there. So, um, so like I said, there are... Oh, yeah, and you can slap juice box from time to time. Get reminded about your quest. Run away from the... I can't remember what their names are. Have you not the aggro yet? There you go. We're not ready to fight you quite yet. We don't have a weapon. Nope, 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 nope. Run away! Um... 
Yeah, I think maybe one of the most successful ones in the genre. I mean, in a 3D sense, of course, that would be Minecraft. And in a side-scrolling sort of sense, that might be something like Terraria. But with this particular view style, I think you would probably think about something like Don't Starve. Now, Don't Starve is relatively slow-paced and dark and foreboding. Whereas this is, again, a li little faster paced. Of course, the start is always a bit slow. But to me, this feels like a faster paced game. And it doesn't feel dark and foreboding. It feels quite light and calm. Although there is a night cycle, it is far from as scary. Okay, so we have more than enough grass. So let's go ahead and um, just return back to our little crafting station over here. So it's worth noting that your character by himself never crafts. You just craft from your craft station. You also notice I don't have any inventory showing yet. You do have this little hot bar down here, which is where I have my, my bacon weed and my space duck pies. But that's it. We do have a... Um, a, a sort of a build menu over here, and if I hit W, I can open that up. But this is just where you place items that you have fabricated, uh, including some of the items I've picked up a few seeds and I've uh, rescued a gnome from the ship. We'll look at that later. So if I click on the crafting station here, though, I can start constructing. So right now we have the ability to create more workstations. So the, uh, <laughs> the Bureau of Shipping Self-Sustaining Survival Station Series S5, the BSSSSSS5, fantastic stuff and we can build some thatched walls but also some thatched saw floor and we can we'll actually get 10 from building this one so we're just gonna hit build it'll queue it up here boop, and then we'll click there to pick it up done so we have 10 floors and now use the build mode to put those down is it the hammer icon in the bottom left of visors interface i swear they change the ui every update yep just open that up and put down some flooring and there we go so if we open up that screen Again, we've got the two modes, but we've got a flooring mode over here, so I can click that, and I can lay down some floor. I'm not going to make too much of an area right now, uh, just because I probably want to build a fancier floor later on with, like, proper wooden walls or something like that. But that'll get us started. A little 9x9 nine nine section of floor. Excellent. Hey, I see some tree-like things down in the distance. You could cut those down for wood. Let me use my analysis engine to design a good tool. <laughs> Your visor tracks the materials you need in the upper right corner. Now get to building this thing. Time to make that locally sourced saw. So he just popped out a schematic for me. Boop. Now, sometimes he will release a schematic like that for plot advancement of things, but I've also found many uh, uh, schematics just by harvesting around. So now I have a job to create one of these saws. It sure happens. I believe I've got enough material. Yep. We needed four sticks and ten more blades of grass to make a sawgrass saw. Tier 1 saw, saw made of sawgrass. This is the mediumest quality saw you've ever seen, but it should let you chop down, chop down log trees and whistle roots. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and build one and pick that up. And I love this sort of like Mega Man-esque level up screen. It's just completely over the top and utterly ridiculous. Check out my saw. It's awesome. Hey, wait a sec, where to go? Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you don't have to worry about switching tools. It happens automatically and contextually, which is fantastic. I mean, again, inventory management is an interesting, it can be a very interesting part of a lot of games if done right. Sometimes it's just done poorly and it's very tedious. Here, they've decided to mostly make tool usage contextual, so I don't have to equip the saw. Would it? Would it though? Yes, it would. Oh god. Uh, yes, we know about tracking. Excellent. Wonderful. And you're giving me a component for the crafting station, yes? Excellent. The sawmill. So if I go back to my crafting station here and I click on my sawmill, I don't have the materials right now, but if I hit track, then it's going to track the materials I need in the top right corner. So I need more of those blades of grass as well as logs. So if I run around over here and I click on these, I don't know, stick plants, what were they? Whistle root. So now I can go and smack them and the saw automatically comes out over here. Boom. We'll get some new stuff. We got a whistle borer and a whistle root reed. So I'm mostly going to try to make sort of a circle-ish uh, path around my base. I'll leave that for now. I don't want to venture too far out because things can get a little bit more scary and a little bit more intense. Particularly, we don't want to get too close to these, uh, what are they called? Wumpers? I don't think I've got an update for them yet in my compendium. No. We've got info about the different plants, which is very useful. This grass is super sharp and firm, like lit yet flexible. It tastes somewhat like lightly toasted marshmallows with a smattering of beef. It tells you what it drops. Just a lovely little reference to everything in here, including enemies that we'll find. So we haven't actually experienced these guys yet. I think we have to kill one first before we get some stats on them. So I'm mostly just going to try not to start in a fight. Oh, it's getting hard to see out here. Well, yeah, it's this thing called darkness. I need some light so I don't fall into a horrible alien-filled pit. Let me see. Boop, boop, boop. Scanning for ship debris. One of the lamps from the ship landed nearby. I marked it, uh, marked its probable area. It's on your map so you can find it. Hit the map icon. Of course, thank you very much. 
So we'll finish smacking that. So the map icon is over here. And you can see it's predicting that there's one of these light sources somewhere over here. This is, again, just sort of quest-based stuff. So we'll head roughly northwest uh, to try to find that. Now, it's not going to get so dark that I can't see. So that's nice. So I can still sort of casually continue to collect things along the way over here. Cut down one of the log trees. There we go. We got our first companion entry for it. Chop, chop, chop. And I think the light source is going to be right up there. So I don't think the map is randomly generated. I'm not sure. At least not your starting area. Because it feels roughly similar to what I experienced in the last game. I'm not sure. I might be wrong about that. It might just be a guarantee about your starting area looking a certain way. And then after that, it might be procedurally generated. Uh, looks like it's on an island, but I can't swim. Build some floor and make a bridge. So luckily, I saved a couple of pieces of flooring over here. Oops. Select and drop it there so that I can walk across and pick up a light source. I think it's bright. What if I want to whip out my saw and chop down some log trees? Torch goes into a special slot in your suit. It, it'll equip whenever it gets dark, so you don't have to worry about scary nighttime. Best nightlight ever. That's true. Again, we don't have to worry about switching. All the light does right now is illuminate this little area. Although, if I take a look at my character info and click on here, um, I think it's possible we'll find different types of torches in here. So, presumably, some might be brighter than others. All right, so... Uh, we need some more logs, so we're going to keep looking for that. We're going to definitely try to stay away from that bug, because the amount of damage it takes, it can deal is pretty high. It feels a little bit... I don't think I want to walk through the marsh here, because we're going to have to pathfind across all this water, so let's find something else. Let's squish some bugs along the way. There you go. Uh, we might aggro a couple of these walking through. No, we make it through. All right. I need to find some trees. There we go. I mean, I'm ultimately going to need all the things, so I may as well collect whatever I find along the way, but the logs are the priority, because that's the thing I am currently short on. There we go, we've got a couple of good things. These guys are can be a bit of a pain in the butt too. They have a fair amount of hit points by the time you really start to fight things. They have quite a bit more hit points than the other things you're fighting. Ah, looks like you got everything you need, but your harvesting trips are starting to stray pretty far from the ship. Yeah, I'm getting tired of walking back all the time to build stuff. Forgot about the ship teleport, didn't you? You can teleport to the ship from the map. Give it a go, it'll teleport you. Teleportation buddies! Yeah, let me grab a little bit more here before we go back. Collect that. Pick up some more bacon weed. Nom nom nom. Chop you down. And a little bit more here. There's some great stuff you can get later on. You can actually domesticate some of these critters. That Those trees are not green. They're just glowing green because of the, the glow bug here. But again, we don't have a weapon. We're also picking up seeds, you may have noticed. And so clearly that indicates we will have the ability to grow some plants. That's why if I do see some dirt patches, I really do want to prioritize picking them up. Because you need quite a bit of dirt to make um, a farm plot. I've probably been missing some, but I don't know. I feel like we haven't seen that much. All right, I just want to pick up a little bit more before we go back. Because it should probably save us another trip afterwards. I think the next thing that they're going to, the sort of the, the, the game, sort of mini tutorial that we're still in is going to coach us to do. I think we'll require some more logs. That is what a heifer version. Yeah, a wampit heifer as opposed to just a regular wampit. The wampit heifers, I think, are the ones that can drop the eggs for you to get domesticated pets. All right, that is probably sufficient for now. Tell you what, let me chop down these last two here. You end up needing quite a bit of the uh, saw blade, either the grass or the leaves. Ooh, nice big chunk of trees over here. Where am I on my map? Just to the southwest of our base. All right, you know what? That's going to be good enough. Let's go ahead and teleport home. Nice little function, not on a cooldown or anything like that. Of course, I mean, you'd only ever be spamming it if you were relatively close to home, so it hardly really matters one way or another. Let me chop that down before we start our crafting. Okay, so we are going to build a sawmill here right over here so that we can saw trees into other trees i like how we're using like the, the saw grass as the blade over here that really is quite sturdy so we're going to construct one over here poke it get a cool little cutscene. Do, 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 do. showing you some of the stuff you can craft we have these recipes unlocked the rest of them have not been unlocked yet i can hit back so many things to build. Time to rev up the old sawhorse. Uh, where did it go? Yes, it's in my suit in my inventory. Good tutorial. I mean, it was really perfect. I, I never had to worry about, well, how do I do a thing? It was like, no, no, here's how you do the thing. Oh, that's how I do the thing. Let's drop the sawmill over there. Ba blam So, uh, hey, Gaduko is the guy who blew up our ship. Are we being watched? Probably. We probably think we exploded. Should get us some prep time. 
I'd better get some armor, both for dealing with Hugo and those stomping beasts. Why don't you start with wooden chestplate? Protect that one kidney of yours. Right, we lost the kidney. Uh, so maybe we're alive. I don't know. Maybe we're a dude in a metal suit. I haven't figured it out. I thought I was a robot. I guess maybe because I look like a robot. My name is Flux, but I guess I'm not a robot. Um, keep your eyes peeled for sentient life. According to the Bureaupedia, the Tendrame, half goat, half plant creatures live here. Okay. All right. We got, um, we got a schematic for a log chest. So if we go into the sawmill, we can construct this log chest, which I think is, we specifically have the quest to do, so we may as well go ahead and do it. I will build one. Level one chest plate covers your bosom with this amazing pile of boards to protect your ribs from slight bruising. And what's great about the crafting, and you'll see as I click this, it doesn't just create a generic log chest. It actually, it's like, it's like a Diablo type game where it'll get some random stat. Oh, this is not a particularly exciting one, actually. It does have built-in HP regen, which is nice, because normally your HP doesn't regen. Actually, I think I would appreciate this quite a bit, but it's a little less exciting than some others. Um, let's go ahead and build the log hat, because we can, and because it looks awesome. Plus, I'm tr gonna try to, hopefully, we'll get some different stats, and it'll be exciting. Ah, acceptable log hat of toxicity. So we rolled sort of a magic item. This has a slight chance to poison our opponents as well as a chance to steal some hit points from them. So we're gonna go ahead and equip that as well. And I look excellent. By the power of wood, I am now protected. And you out how to stop the creatures from killing me. They're mighty aggressive. Well, I bet you could get all kinds of useful parts out of those hideous beasts. Fire up the analytical engine of yours and find out how to make something stabby with the parts we have. <sighs> Proper shank for a proper delivery driver. Get it built. Boom. Sawgrass sword. So again, it's auto track. We need more sawgrass and we are out of boards now. So we're going to have to go and wander about again. Uh, we remember to the southwest there was a good set of logs there. So let's head back in that general direction. Love my hat. So we still don't have any way to fight right now. So we're still going to have to be a little bit careful about around the wampets. I don't need this yet, but we will need some of that, so we may as well collect it. And it does give you a running total of how much you've got of various things, so you can start to get a sense of like, okay, I've got lots of these things, I probably don't have to worry about. Now, I'm worried that with all the talking I'm doing, I am missing dirt patches, but I'm not really seeing it. Leave me alone. All the attack the enemies I've dealt with so far have sort of these attack patterns. They do telegraph what they're about to do. So it's a nice little game of, you know, figuring out what kind of patterns they might do, and then doing some dodging while counterattacking. And actually, we're gonna get some cool stun things. Hey, we just found a schematic for a wooden table. Lovely. Oh, there's a dirt patch. Let's go and get that. We need a lot. We need eight patches of those dirts to make one farm plot. I've got four right now, though. So that's not too bad. Oh, lots of trees over here. Might as well pick up that stick at the same time. We've got a good amount of sticks right now, but we will go through all that pretty aggressively. Okay, up to nine of these logs, and what I'll probably do as soon as I hit this, I will probably go and generate my uh, my sword, because then when we go around picking up crafting and um, equipment, we can also kill stuff. Now, there's no level up system as far as I can tell. You don't get experience points from killing anything, but you just get more crafting materials. Crafting materials that will quickly unlock some pretty excellent stuff. Might as well pick you up, and we're gonna need all this. We need a lot of that sawgrass, at least early on. I suspect that. As we go through the tech tree, we're going to start needing more and more other things. And we can go to different areas as well. We're not limited to where this initial base is. A, we can create everything, including the base crafting desk, anywhere else we want. Um, but in addition to that, we can discover more teleporters around the world to be able to, be able to move quicker. So let's go ahead and pop back to our base, since we have enough to make the sword. And let's do it, and hope we get some cool stats. Sawgrass Sword. A sword made of grass. This will end well for you. Ah, oh, looks like we got a default quality. It's not glowing green. Oh! Okay, so it's not the acceptable quality. It doesn't have, like, the higher base damage or whatever. But it's got a 10% chance to bleed and a 10% chance to poison. And 65 damage per second. Taste my blade! What does it taste like? Celery. All right, now we'll need a better station to make that comm device. Right, so we're trying to communicate back to our bosses over at um, whatever shipping we were, BS. Um, and for that, we need to build a comms device. This beast looks like they have good hides on them. Take some of their leathery skin bits and build us a skinnery. What? I was doodling. What would you say? 
just to feed some of the wampits and build the skinnery. Need some of those parts, maybe from those grayish reeds near the water? Okay. So the skinnery, we need some sticks, which we have plenty, but we also need some leather and some bone, or some skin and some bone, I suppose. So I'm going to go off in a different direction. I'm going to go down to the southeast over here, collecting stuff along the way. But once we run into some wampits again, we will start to slay them. So these are just base level wampits. This should be pretty doable. And all we have to worry about is dodging their stomp. Now, sometimes they stomp twice in a row like that. So you have to be a little bit careful. Now, you don't have to click for every swing. Just click once and your guy will keep uh, swinging. You get a good look at that thing, Juice Box. Full analysis complete. Bureaupedia calls them... All right, it's the Bureau of Shipping. BS, Bureau of Shipping. Uh, calls them Wampits, stomp happy creatures that love sawgrass. Since you uh, dissected it, it's able to learn what makes it tick. Add my findings of their weaknesses to your compendium. Yes, so... Let's open up the compendium over here. And if I go to data, we can find out information about the Wampit. When this creature is domesticated... Ah... Uh, at your side provides the following buffs, which is nice, so we can get some extra stats just by having one of these domesticated things with us. But also we get a breakdown of what it's resistant to, so it's pretty resistant to poison and fire, which sort of sucks because we do have a poison blade, but we'll see what else we can do. And then we get even more stats about a variety of things. I love all these, like, statistics. Just fantastically useful. And either, either, these are the drops that we can get from the Wampit. We haven't seen them all, but it's just this is everything you can get from this particular Wampit. And again, we'll have to be looking for some bigger wampets later on. Now, we still mostly just need the wampet bits, but we may as well grab logs, because we're going to need all these soon. Thanks, poison! So he's taking poison damage. Well, it looks like three every couple of seconds or something like that. Wampets are dangerous. Juice box. Hey, still have my space wrench? Yeah, why? I bet I could stun a wampet with it if I throw it hard enough. Great idea. Just selecting your actions, you can hurt your enemies. All right, yes, action slots. Manage things. Excellent. Got the picture. Thanks. So I'm going to go ahead and open my suit management because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, I'm going to put it on the S key just because that's what I had at last game. Or I don't know. You know maybe I'll put it on F. There we go. Because I don't want to accidentally eat some food when I'm trying to smack people. I might do it a few times just because of my, my other test game. I had it on a different hotkey. But now what I can do is I can click on the Wampet and hit F. And on the next swing, it'll use the... Um, whoops. Not paying enough attention. It'll use the, um, the the wrench, which will stun it, which is a great way to get them out of their attack routine. Now, there's a cooldown on that. Also, I'd rather not fight two at once, because that might be a little annoying, because I would be spending all my time dodging. I just want to aggro one over here. There you go. And just pull him over away from the other one. There we are. Get stunned. You can stun the mid-attack. It's just wonderful. Oh, we got the other one aggroed as well. Dodge you. Smack you around. Only a 10% chance to proc the poison. Nice when you get it early on. You can even kill them in midair. Which, thank goodness there, because I don't think I was getting out of the way uh, quickly enough. But, there we go. We'll pick up some more doodads as we're around here. Different types of material over there. Can't. Well, we could build a, a floor to go there, but we're not going to bother with that quite yet. I'm not going to fight these guys right now. Um, just because they would take forever to kill with a level 1 weapon. Get stunned. Got fighting two at once. Be nice if I could get bleeds and poisons on both of them, because again, I'm going to be spending most of my time just trying to get avoid getting whomped. Excellent. Got a crit there to finish you off. They're not particularly challenging, although you don't move the fastest. We could build some boots, but I'm going to wait. Boots and gloves, I'm just going to wait until we get the next level of armor over here, because I think the wooden ones get replaced pretty quick. And these guys are easy enough to fight that I shouldn't have to worry about armoring too much. But uh, notice the armor did give me more hit points. I think I had like 50, and now I'm at 125. Oh! A Glorch! That is a, a schematic I did not have last time. I think that's a Glow Torch. I suspect we'll have to kill some Glow Bugs for their glowy bits to build those. But that might be fun to build around our little camp. Fight the Wampet. Stun him out of the hop. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll just keep, keep swinging. I'm pretty sure with that crit, I'll kill him before he stomps me. Now, we do have some food, so we could heal ourselves up. Plus, we did get that regeneration armor, which means if I'm not, like, in dire conditions, I could just use that. Uh, I probably could wait in on the stun a bit, but nope, there we go. I'll just finish him off. Kill more of those reeds. We're still short on bones. Holy crap. And we're going to need 22 sticks for this station, so I may as well collect some more of these bits. Well, I guess they're reed. They're not stick here. Stick is a different item. Could try the blue guy. It's only one of the small ones. 
but he's not going to drop anything we need right now. And yeah, they have more hit points. They're just a lot of work. Oh my god, he aggroes from pretty far away, though. That's why. Quite a bit more dangerous. Oh, there's some dirt over there. Let's kill this Wumpet. Knock you out. Mid jump here. Oop! I thought I might have been able to kill him first. So, what do we do? That regeneration rate is actually pretty good. So, it must be per second. It's like somewhere less than 1%. I don't remember what it was. But I think it ticks per second, which means we're actually healing up pretty damn fast. Alright. Still need some bone. Yeah, I should really wait, like, as long as possible to uh, stun them out of that. Um, fighting two is just annoying because you spend all your time dodging. Oh, they both double jumped. All right, let's go ahead and eat one of the bacon weeds. It heals quite a bit, so it's a little overkill, but... All right, there we go. We've got enough bones. Should probably collect a little bit more stuff while I'm here. And certainly, I suspect that after we build the skinnery, whatever we build next, we're probably going to need some skin and bones to do that, so we may as well get some extra. Ooh, some dirt over there. Let's pick that up. Get stunned. You're poisoned as well, which is nice. Oh! I should have stayed for the swing. I like. I didn't make a choice early enough. I was like, no, I'll stay for the swing. No, maybe I'll run. And my hesitation caused me to take some damage, but. And this, uh, this region is really nice. I didn't have that last time. Okay, we are gonna have to wrap up this episode shortly. Let me see if I, uh, if I get close enough to fight the Wampit, I'm gonna aggro the next level of dudes. Oh! Let's kill one of the big Wampits here. Is this a heifer? Excellent, we can take you. So a lot more hit points, and a fair bit more damaging. Although with our bleed that triggered early, it's really handy. Oop! Just double jump. Oh yes, I killed your mommy. Get stunned on your way down and die. Okay, that's probably more than enough. Let's go ahead and pop home. Vrump. And construct the skinnery. Build. Poke. Get the cool animation. Yeah, that looks really pleasant. Go back and build it. Skinnery is creepy. Yeah, see, I agree. Creepy and effective. You'll need more powerful weapons and armor to fight the beast around here. Let's see what the new wep see what new weapons you can build. There's a saw board in here I could put together. Well, if you want a track recipe, you can, yes, hit the track button. I bet there's a lot of stuff to build and discover around here. I wonder why the bureau never fully explored this place. Not the time for silly questions, Flux. We've got to build that comm device and deliver those packages. Yeah, I th well, yeah. Think I'd give up my employee of the month streak or take a pension cut? No way. We'll need something to broadcast the signal. Let me scan for a crystal resonator. Scanning. Convenient. There's an extremely resonant substance nearby. We could use it as a transmitter for a device, put it on the map, and we'll explore it at some point. So, um, oh, we did discover a teleporter. I didn't realize. So, because I can teleport over here if I want, which is very handy. And somewhere over there... We've got some sort of transmitter thingamabob. I think before I head in that direction, we will fully uh, upgrade some of our gear over here. And um, we've got gloves, we've got boots, or these are pants. Well, want pants, but they're boots. I'm going to go ahead and build this. It's actually level 3. We didn't even have level 1 boots yet. If we get really lucky, we should get some movement speed boost out of these guys. Let's go put these on. Oh! This is my first purple I've ever seen in the game! Excellent Wompats of Shocking. So I believe this is, I don't know if this is when we attack or when we get hit. No, it must be when we attack. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a chance of triggering a burn or shock, which is great. I love the extra move speed, plus the bonus health and the toughness over here is going to be really, really quite exceptional. Oh, and we have enough stuff for the saw board, a level two weapon. Let's go ahead and build that now. This is going to be the first time when we see the upgrade interface. It's going to show us what we already have and compare it to this new item, and then we get to pick which one we want to keep with. Because what I could do is I could generate multiple copies of each one of these and pick whichever one ends up with the best roll. So it's going to be a base quality weapon. It does have a 10% crit chance and a 10% vampire chance. So we'll lose the bleed and the poison, but overall gain more DPS. So we'll go ahead and equip this new one. 
But we haven't lost the old weapon. If we want to, we can go back into our character sheet over here, click on the weapon, and then see, we could switch back to our Sawgrass saw Sword of Toxicity, but obviously we're going to keep the new weapon. All right, so we're going to put a cut in here, but in the next episode, we're going to continue to craft. We'll probably go and kill some more critters and see if we can get a full set of level 3 armor, which would be really nice and helpful. We also get these sticky bombs, which is pretty potent, actually. Um, it sticks everything to death. Deals 75% of your DPS's physical damage. I mean, we could build a set of these bombs and, and use them to deal with big group. Let's tell you what, we may as well do one of these. But yeah, next time what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and farm some more critters, trying to level up all of our armor, and then we'll see if we can find that resonance crystal to continue our main quest. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.